Hi guys, welcome to the James Bond Show. I'm your host, Crazy Kajibi, with no fears, limits, or substitutes. Guys, I am finally doing the review that I have been promising to do for so long. Yes, GoldenEye. I am so sorry all for delaying this. So, let's get right into this. So here's my GoldenEye review. Off the cuff, not scripted, nothing like that. I'm just gonna talk from love, passion for this film. Okay, 1995. Wow. I was 20 years old, so it was 25 years ago. I'm now 45. My goodness, it, it was like, honestly, like yesterday, and I remember it so well. The hype for this film was insane. Hence, I'm surrounded by a whole bunch of GoldenEye goodies that I put here just for this review. The hype was so crazy. We had Nintendo, probably about within a year later, Nintendo 64 promoted the game GoldenEye. It was promoted through cups and things at the cinema. And if any other collector out there, I know one that has this, if any other collector has that very rare GoldenEye Nintendo 64 promotional cup, let me know because I would love to see that. GoldenEye Pepsi can. I paid a pretty penny for this one. Got this actually imported uh, from Japan in the last two years. So it was crazy. Even John West Tuna got in on the action with a John West GoldenEye lunchbox. I love it. We had Terry's chocolate bars as well. Look at that. Not many people have one of those either. So there you go. This is a bit of my collection. And of course, we have the car that just woo, blew all our minds. We were ready to see crazy action with it, and we didn't get any, but it blew our minds anyway, just because of the fact that James Bond was now driving a German car. But I think the design of the Z3, I know some Americans say Z3, but uh, Z3, there we go, right there. And that one, I think from memory, that one's by UTS. Okay, guys, so let's get into this review. So Timothy Dalton was gone. He quit. That's another story for another time. But he bowed out in 1994. Pierce Brosnan got the gig. Everyone basically assumed he was the heir apparent from Roger Moore and he was going to get the gig. So he finally got his shot in 1995's GoldenEye. I saw it at the Melbourne premiere at Hoyt Cinema in Melbourne and I was all decked out, dressed up in a suit with a James Bond tie that I still have to this day. So it's in my cupboard. I should have been wearing it with this shirt. And I've been saving this shirt for a special occasion. So the film starts with James Bond in the PTS running along this incredible dam. He's trying to break into a Russian chemicals facility. He comes along, so basically, he comes along, he does this, and he goes, And that is the start of one of the, honestly, the greatest PTS in the James Bond franchise. It was mind-blowing. After six years of no Bond, wow. Now, this was the second James Bond film I ever got to see at the cinema. I got into James Bond in 88, so I was reading all the books, and then I saw Timothy Dalton's License to Kill in the cinema in 1989, and I kept reading the Fleming books. So Dalton was my Bond. I'm going to put that right out there. But still, like the rest of the world, we wanted to see this $56 million budget film that ended up grossing around or close up to $400 million worldwide, between $360 to $400 million thereabouts. Now, the PTS is tense. It's taut. Great stunts. Action packed James Bond meets up with 006 Alec Trevelyan, played by Sean Bean, and they break into this weapons facility. Sean Bean's character, Trevelyan, he's captured by General Oromov, played by Gottfried John, who puts a gun to his head. Bond goes back to this little bomb mine that he'd set. He then sets it for three minutes instead of six. He's got to escape. Sean Bean gets plugged in the head by General Oromov, or so we think. And then all the crazy Ruskies, they shoot at Bond. Bond has to escape. 
boom, 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 shoots his gun. All these barrels come out, fall on these dudes, on the Russian dudes. Bond escapes. He's outside now. The soldiers come out and chase him. He sees this aeroplane. He run it. He's trying to get after this aeroplane. He gets into the plane. He, well, he gets a motorbike. Ends up back on the motorbike. Aeroplane goes off the cliff. It's got no pilot. And James Bond flies off that cliff after the plane. Now, the model miniature work by Derek Mennings and everything previous, previous to this. And you can see the beautiful matte paintings that their artists did. All looks great. Works fantastic. Now, a lot of people think, or some people think, that the visual effects in this film are dated. I don't really believe that. Um, I remember them so vividly from 1995. I saw it six times at the cinema, once for every year I waited from License to Kill to Goldeneye. And Bond, in true Bond style, goes over the cliff, the plane's flying down, Bond's going down, He's the bike's gone that way, Bond's gone this way, he gets into the plane, rescues the plane basically, steers up, comes up over the factory, factory blows up, boom, we're into the credit song, Tina Turner singing Goldeneye, you can hear in the background. And no, you copyright scoundrels out there, that's not Tina Turner singing, that's a dodgy one, so don't try and stop my video from playing. The other day I played a video, had Paul Simon music playing in the background for my little uh, Daniel Craig gift video, if you haven't checked that video out, it's about three below, check it out. And then I had to film the whole thing again because they got on to me about that song. So, James Bond then, the credits is all beautiful. Daniel Kleiman uh, makes his debut doing the credits for the James Bond films. And he's done all of them since except for 2008's Quantum of Solace. So, we're now in uh, Monte Carlo, really filmed, this section's filmed in France. And James Bond's in the, the Aston Martin makes a comeback. He's in there with uh, a woman that M has sent to basically evaluate 007. We get this great chase, suddenly a red Ferrari comes out of nowhere. That's got Xenia on, on a top in it, played by Famke Jansen. She chases Bond. They have this incredible, really cool car chase. The music, some people think the music here by Eric Serra is really often sounds like a Mario Kart, like a Nintendo... <laughs> like a Nintendo game, but you know what? I like it. I like it. And I can just imagine Luigi or one of the little Mario Brothers characters shooting out. Pew! Pew! And you guys like that. Why not? But it's filmed beautifully. Martin Campbell is here directing this film, and he directs the, excuse the French, the crap out of this film. He does an incredible job. He's massive on storyboards and he storyboarded everything and Peter Lamont is back doing the production design and it's fantastic. Bond ends up meeting with Xenia on a top. Um, they play cards or Baccarat. You can tell straight away she's a villain. So the, the plot moves on. So basically what's happened here is that a GoldenEye satellite, the GoldenEye satellite has been hijacked, so to speak. Tiger helicopter in Monte Carlo gets hijacked. Then the GoldenEye satellite kind of gets taken over by General Urimov. We find out later on when Bond's trying to work out who is this mysterious Yanis, uh, how is General Urimov involved in this. He's trying to put it all together. And what is great is we already know some parts of, you know, that Bond doesn't know, but then we don't know parts along with Bond that he doesn't know. So it's great to go along with him and find out who's who. And it just builds up, builds up with so much action as well. There's an incredible tank chase in St. Petersburg, Russia. And the tank chase is incredible. There's some great stunts and great uh, on-set visual effects, the way they've done that with, you know, trucks that get cut in half, so to speak. And it's awesome. There's so much action in this film. Um, I don't mind the score by Eric Serra. I think in some parts it's okay. I think the score unfairly gets put down, but I like it. Anyway, James Bond finds out that Giannis is in fact Alec Trevelyan, his old buddy. And those two, they're not buddies anymore. They are at war. And so they're at war and Bond's got to basically bring him down and bring Giannis down. We end up in a big, um, basically, a train scene. Bond crashes a train. Again, the model miniature work here by Derek Mennings is fantastic. He crashes a train. Um, Famke Jansen's character, she escapes with Alec Trevelyan. They escape. 
Boris Gudishenko, he's off somewhere as well. He's a little Russian hacker programmer, weasel dude, played brilliantly by Alan Cumming. I'm invincible! So there's a lot to like in this film. The, the plot is good, the story is really good, and it's very Bond-like. So then we get towards the end of the film, Bond and Natalia track down. Basically, Bond ends up in somewhere near Puerto Rico or somewhere, or Costa Rica or somewhere. I can't remember. And he's wearing a suit kind of like this, and he's driving this, and then Whitaker comes along. I don't have a Whitaker doll, so I'm not doing that. And anyway, he ends up in an aeroplane with Natalia, and they fly over, they get shot down, and then this bad bitch comes along. Oh, and he's not in these fatigues anymore. He's now, James Bond is now in these fatigues, and he fights her, and she gets on top of him, tries to squeeze him. He shoots at the helicopter, and she goes, and he says, she always did enjoy her. a good squeeze. <laughs> and there you go. And then she's dead. He keeps going. He goes down to Alex Trevelyan's incredible, well, it is really an underwater base as the satellite comes up or the water drains out. And again, Derek Mettings, this guy should have won an Oscar for this scene alone. His model miniature work is just absolutely mind-blowing. So then what happens is we got this crazy bastard, Alex Trevelyan, he comes along, he fights him, they go up on top of the cradle as the whole base is blowing up. They fight. Rah, 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 rah. And then he headbutts in. He falls down. He's hanging on onto him. And he says, for England, James. And James says, no, for me. And then he goes, ah, ah, splat. And he still doesn't even die. He's still alive after that until the whole cradle falls on him. And that is basically the film. Now, if I was going to show someone a James Bond film, and they've never seen a Bond film before. And I had to pick three Bond films. GoldenEye is right up there. It's in that top three. The three films I would show are pretty much GoldenEye, Goldfinger, and Moonraker. Why Moonraker? Because that's my choice, my film of choice, to show girls that have never had ladies, to show girls that have never seen a James Bond film because... Well, they just want fun with them. What's your Bond film? I don't want to give the ladies anything too serious. When they see Jules chasing Bond and all that out of a plane, it's fun. And it's a lot of fun and a lot of action. So, the Dinsies don't have to think too much. Oh, I'm going to get killed by the feminists for that one. Anyway, I'll give myself a thumbs down for that one. <laughs> so, that's basically God Night. Now, let me go through little bits and talk about it. Talk about the characters, the casting, the music, and the overall feeling of this film. Okay, I'm going to start with Pierce Brosnan. What do I think of him as James Bond? Look, remember I said earlier, I read all the Bond novels, okay, and I was a fanatic of the novels, and I was a fanatic of Connery and Dalton, and Dalton was my Bond. So, I'm going to get ready for the hate and the backlash, but don't hate me yet, wait to hear the rest of this review. What do I think of Brosnan? Does he look good? Yes. Is he Ian Fleming's James Bond? No, he's not. Now, guys, out there, Brosnan fans, doesn't matter how much you love him. Compare Timothy Dalton in License to Kill as James Bond. He sneaks into Talisa Soto, Lupe's bedroom on the wave crest, puts a knife to her throat and says, Make a sound, and you're dead. That is Ian Fleming's James Bond. Take that scene, play it in your head, and then play any Brosnan scene that you think is him being tough and he just cannot compare the problem with Brosnan is he's too pretty he looks like a male model um, some of the script some of the stuff is just a little off and doesn't quite suit him and you can see in this film he's a little bit unsure how to play things now I'm going to get to a scene that I specifically want to talk about okay now the other night I watched, uh, and he's very entertaining, he's very good James Bond reviewer, I watched a Calvin Dyson video on his favourite money pennies, and he had Samantha Bond, I think at number two. Samantha Bond to me is the worst money penny that has ever been put 
to screen. Her money penny was rubbish. Now the biggest fault with Goldeneye, the only fault with Goldeneye, and I'm probably not even going to sit, consider this when I give it my Kajibi star rating at the end of this, is the money penny and Bond scene. It is terrible. And it's probably because Fura Broccoli wanted to bring, she's brought in female M, which I don't have a problem with because Judy Dench's M is really good here. But this M that she plays is completely different from the next film, Tomorrow Never Dies and the World Is Not Enough. We never really see this M again. But the money penny played by Samantha Bond is all about female kind of feminist empowerment, the short hair, the basically treats James Bond like he is a creepy sex pest in the office. And their scene is played so horribly. And I'll tell you what, Martin Campbell here, this is his only falter in Goldeneye and Casino Royale, the two Bond films he directed. Slap on the knuckles, he directed this horribly. When Bond says to uh, Money Penny, oh, and what's the, what's the penalty for that someday you have to make do when you're in your windows? Brosnan plays this all wrong and then he says after you and she says no after you and he's looking at her like she's the villain of the film he's looking at her like she just killed his pet dog the scene doesn't work it is a terribly terribly directed badly written and it's just a bad scene there's no fun there's no, I'm not saying there's no chemistry. There could be chemistry between them. The chemistry gets better in the film. Sorry, in the next films, and I think they realise in Tomorrow Never Dies and World Is Not Enough, they boo-booed massively with that scene in Gold Knight. It was honestly like we were watching a film like with Jodie Foster where she's being raped and she's going to press charges against this guy. That's how bad it was. So I'm not going to say any more about it. But every time that scene comes on and I'm watching Gold Knight, I fast forward it or I skip, I just, I cannot watch it. It's so awkward. Um, okay, let's get to Famke Jansen now. I love brunettes, I love brunettes, but everyone says, oh, she's hot, she's so hot, she's hot. I don't see it. I've just never seen her hot. I think it's because she looks too much like a villain, like the hair's all up, like some feminist Nazi that belongs in a death camp or something. Now, is she funny? Is she awesome? Yeah, she's awesome. She's funny. She's dangerous. But me finding her sexy, I just, I don't quite see it at all. Now, Natalia Simonova, played by Isabella Skorupko, she steals this film. Now, I haven't done a video counting down all my favorite Bond girls, but you can be guaranteed she is going to be up there. Natalia is brilliant. And Isabella Skorupko actually got offered some big Hollywood films uh, and she turned them down. I believe one of them was Entrapment with Sean Connery and she turned it down and she went back to the quiet life uh, in her homeland and she's a singer as well. So props to her for not wanting to get into that kind of demonic Hollywood system. Who knows what they were asking her to do to get those big contracts but she said no nah, I don't want it and she bowed. And if you have a lot of look, a lot a lot of actors look at a lot of actors they suddenly, they're on the scene and they're hot, 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 and they bail and they get out of Hollywood. Have a look at it. you got to ask yourself why. She was one of them. But she is incredible in this film. Desmond Llewellyn as Q, he, he's fun, he's fantastic. The Q scene's really great, especially, don't eat that, that's my lunch. And they've got a really nice chemistry. Um, it's a little, just a tad needs working on, a bit stale, but it's still pretty good. The disappointment is we didn't get to see the rockets on this thing. So they try to make up for it massively with the BMW 750i in the next film, In Tomorrow Never Dies, with all the gadgets and all that. Joe Don Baker uh, makes a cameo in this film uh, as Wade, and he's a CIA agent Wade, Jack Wade, and he is awesome. Now, let me get to Alec Trevelyan and the villains. First of all, one of my favourite all-time villains is General Oromov. I think... He steals this film. He and Cheki Caro, who plays um, the Russian um, character, he's against, he's basically like a politician and he's checking against General Oromov and he is the one in the interrogation room doing the interrogation, Cheki Caro. He's an incredible actor. He's brilliant. Every scene he's in, 
he steals the film too, but he and Oromov are just, wow, and they've got incredible chemistry when they're versing each other. And Brosnan's got great chemistry with both of those actors. Sadly, Gottfried John died, I believe it was 2014, he died of cancer, and an incredible German actor. And he's a type of actor, he reminds me of Christoph Waltz and someone that Tarantino would have gone and used in, in films. So, yeah, and his death, the way he dies suddenly, like shot, we don't quite see it clearly, is really bad. And I was so hoping that in another Brosnan film, we would see that he escaped, he just got a bullet wound, a flesh wound, and he came back in another film. And it wasn't to be. We never got to see General Urimov come back, so we have to say, okay, well, he didn't make it out of the train, he died, whether he's gun wound, gun wound or the train blowing up, but I did not want that character to, to die. I loved him. Now... Sean Bean is Alex Trevelyan. He's tough, he's physical, but I have a problem here with him as a villain. I just find, like, he's this Irishman, which he is in real life, trying to be... Trying... I think he's from Irishman. Trying to be suave. Everything's too smooth, to the point he comes across really smarmy and kind of like fake money. And it doesn't just quite work for me. Now, in the scene where he's in that kind of like almost like this piles of statues, like almost like a burial ground for statues, and he meets Bond and he comes out and he reveals himself as Jonas. Wow. He, Sean Bean, he's brilliant there. If he had played it more that, more low-key, more sincere, instead of overly poshy washy and trying to be that I would have found him more villainous so I've never actually found him too scary a character I found the one that was just had the best screen presence and genuine and real to be General Oromov but overall what an incredible cast GoldenEye has it has an absolutely amazing cast so amazing cast the score is not as bad as what people say. Yes, it's very reminiscent to Leon, which was a film that Eric Serra did the music for with Luc Besson, an uh, incredible French director, one of my favourite directors. If you've never seen uh, Leon, you've got to see that film. It's absolutely incredible. Um, starring Sean Reno as well, so it's a great film. And Eric Serra's music is very similar, but you know what, they went after him, they chose him for a reason, and they got him on board. So, overall, Brosnan. I'm going to get back to him quickly. So I don't buy him, especially on the beach scene with Natalia, when, you know, she says, and everyone, every hero I know is dead. And he like grabs it, he grabs it and he kisses it and he smooches it. Great, that's fantastic. That's how Bond should be. Today, feminists would woo, get all crazy at that. But that is how James Bond should be. But when he's talking about, you know, he stays cold to stay alive, I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. And then the next scene, we've got the hairiest chest ever put to film since Sean Connery and from Rush With Love. Brosnan's got the full hairy rack going there. And... Damn, it's distracting. I just gotta focus on Isabella Skorupko looking all beautiful, laying next to him. Um, overall, I love Gold Knight. I do love it. It's not an Ian Fleming type Bond like The Living Daylights or License to Kill, but it's a big, fun, moving, epic film. And I love it. I absolutely love it. GoldenEye is one of my all-time favourites. It's in my top five, top six. I'm trying to think. I think in my list I did recently, I had it in my top five. It's a go-to film. It's a go-to film. And Tina Turner's opening title track, GoldenEye, fantastic, written by um, Bono and the Edge from U2. And I love it. Uh, love the film. So, guys, I'm going to give GoldenEye, even though... I've got some points in there that aren't too flash hot. I'm going to give Golden Eye five Kajibi stars out of five. Out of five. And if you want me to go seven Kajibi stars, double or seven stars, I'm going to give it seven because I think it matches everything well and it shoved it right up the people that said that, oh, it's not a, it's a $56 million worth investment not making. Those people were wrong. And during the year, all the hype up to it, I knew those people were going to be wrong, so they can suck eggs. Goldmine came back, and Bond was back, and it is a fantastic film. Guys, I've been Crazy Kajibi. Please drop a like, subscribe to the channel. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, and also I've posted today my Solitaire video, my review of the Solitaire doll by Big Chief. 
I've also done the odd job doll as well and coming up very soon is my Sean Connery James Bond from Goldfinger doll review as well that's coming up really soon so check out those videos also I just want to make a reminder people have been asking me and even emailed me about my promised video that I was going to do titled why Barbara Broccoli has to go I've not forgotten about the video but in the midst of this um coronavirus pandemic all this craziness has happened I work a lot now and I just work 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 I've just had two days off so I've got to pump out some videos um but it's just a lot of work so please bear with me I haven't forgotten about it I don't want to rush it out I want to do it properly it's going to be all kind of point form and done and then I'm going to absolutely rip Barbara Broccoli apart and why Eon needs change and even though you guys can be so loyal to Eon, remember, our loyalty has to be to James Bond. It's got to be to the character of James Bond. And we deserve these films. If they don't want to do them, then they should pass it on to a company that does want to do them and wants to focus on them. And all that will be in this epic video. So don't despair. It is coming. My plan is to have it out by 9 p.m. Australian time on Monday, and that's based around my work. So please be patient for it. It is coming, and it is a video you do not want to miss when it comes out, when it drops, why Barbara Broccoli needs to go. Sit back with your moccasins, your sandals, your slippers, whatever. Get your fire on in your house, your apartment. Sit back with a drink, with your gym bean, your bourbon, your martini, whatever. And watch it, because you are not going to want to miss one. Guys, till next time, keep on bonding and say hi to your mum for me. Hey, where's my Tomorrow Never Dies video? Oh, I want Crazy Kajivi to review that. Hey, racist. I know I come from Wuhan. Who says I come from Wuhan? Come on, you come from Wuhan, we all know you do. I do not, crazy, can you? I